Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the College Express Podcast. My name is Tyler, and as always, I'm joined with Kara and Mackenzie. We have a very special guest today. Our special guest is Steph. Steph, if you could tell us what you do here at Carnegie Dartlet and also where you went to college. Uh, so at Carnegie Dartlet, I'm a marketing designer. Uh, so I've so far created the branding guide and various internal marketing material. Um, and I went to Bridgewater State University and graduated last year. Sweet. So today we're going to be talking all about dorm rooms in college as well as the roommate situation and how you can prepare yourself for that come this September, maybe August if you're moving in a little bit early. So <laughs> buckle that seatbelt, get ready, and strap that helmet because we're diving in. So question number one comes from at underscore KC underscore Brown. I believe it's two underscores after that. If I get it wrong, you might not find them, but hopefully I got it right. And their question is, do you have to live in the dorms at most colleges? If so, which year can you live off campus? This depends on the college entirely, mm -hmm. but uh, for my personal situation, Champlain required you to be on campus the first year. Highly recommended, I should say, because you could get around that if you really wanted to. But uh, most freshmen lived on campus, and it is a great opportunity to meet people that you don't know yet. And you get to kind of form that pack initially and then kind of branch out and get to meet everybody. Uh, for when you can move off campus, that's pretty much almost immediately. Uh, you can move in and decide that, hey, this isn't right for me. Uh, even second semester rolls around, and it might not even be moving off in the dorm, but moving into a different dorm. Uh, but then most of the colleges are usually second year. Actually, a lot of them now are kicking you out yeah. of the dorms and saying, hey, you can live here for free, or not for free, but you have to pay room and board. Yeah. But you live here, it's guaranteed freshman year, and then sophomore year, you're on your own and uh, get moving. So, yeah, I think uh, it is beneficial to live in dorms the freshman year. As I mentioned, you get to meet everybody. You live with an RA most of the time, I would assume all of the time, but I, I don't know if that's true or not. And your RA will get you into the college life, tell you what's going around campus, what's going on campus. Uh, also, you're going to be not only with kids in your grade, but you'll be with a mix of freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. Uh, you could have a super senior living with you, which is always fun because they know the most about campus and where they go. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah. yeah, it mostly depends, um, especially um, for moving off campus. It's a very urban versus a rural thing and size of the college. So Champlain had um, housing approved for all, and not approved, but guaranteed if you got your deposit in, they would find you housing for all four years. It's not necessarily true if you go to like a school in Boston because there's just nowhere to put people. So That's Suffolk true. was on my list and they didn't guarantee housing for any year because they're right downtown. So I lived in Boston. If I ended up going to Suffolk, they probably would have been like, mm, you, you live in that park. You sure you need to be in the dorm? You could just, you know, take the tea. Um, also, a lot of camp colleges now, um, if they guarantee housing, it's not necessarily in this country. So I got, it was also <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah. A lot of places <laughs> would be like, you can go abroad your first semester. And the secret is that they don't have housing for you. And that's why they encourage students uh, to go abroad for the first semester. So I got accepted to Suffolk. It was kind of like, nah. And not that I didn't like Suffolk, but I was like hemming and hawing my colleges. And they sent me a letter and said, hey, you can go to Madrid for your first semester. And I was like, but I don't speak Spanish. And uh, my mom, well, yeah. <laughs> we were talking earlier, the pinata room. The pinata room. I always had candy in my dorm room, so my friends called it la pinata. <laughs> but that's not Spanish. <laughs> Pinatas are Mexican. I don't, I don't speak Spanish <laughs> um, That's fun. not like from Spain. So, um, yeah, so it was um, it was interesting. So that's that's a choice, too. I mean, if, that, if you're interested in living on campus, but you don't want to do it in this country, find a college that doesn't have room for you. I also looked that's at great. Suffolk, and... I had heard that too, that yeah. they don't guarantee housing, and I think that was part of the reason I didn't choose them um, to go to school, because I definitely wanted to live yeah. on campus freshman year. Um, I also wanted like a campus feel, mm -hmm. and you are right in the middle of Boston, that's yeah. like, it's like right next to the commons. There um, really is no yeah. campus for South Park. Not that that's a bad thing, it's just not something either one of us was looking for. Yeah. I think my school guaranteed housing for all four years because not many people 
like not a lot of juniors or seniors or even sometimes sophomores lived on campus and so many kids commuted Mm -hmm. because it's such a big school that they could give housing to upperclassmen too. Um, It wasn't required for freshmen, but I think it was recommended. And most people do stay on campus as a freshman. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend it. They also have like usually games when you're a freshman for the first like month or two to get to know people in your hallway. So if you're competitive like me, they got games. The icebreakers. There's like Sundays and candy after. It's not bad. (laughs) There's a lot of places recommend it. I I didn't know that Champlain required it. I thought it was just... I don't know if it was required. I think it was was highly recommended. Like freshmen always got dorms. They have the most dorms are for first years at Champlain. Yep. And most schools are the same way. I think there's one school, I don't remember the name of it, but I was editing one of their articles last year and they required students to live on campus, but like everything was paid for. It was one of those really bougie colleges um, that like you basically guaranteed scholarship if you get in and you're not paying for anything. Um, but you have to be way smart. <laughs> Does Champlain um, allow freshmen to bring their cars on campus? Because I know some schools don't you, do that. You know, my yes. School it it depended, yeah, what you yeah. Mean, but yeah. ours was, I forget what, Gil- Gilbane? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, and they started charging yeah. for that now because they cut it in half. Well, yeah, when I was there, I had a brick thrown through my window in Gilbane. Yeah. There was about 10 cars, and I was in the unlucky row. Yeah. That, had a brick smash there. Yeah, cool. yeah they oh. just chopped the parking lot in half and they started charging students. It used to be free to park at Gilbane, which was like a mile from campus, and there was a shuttle that would come around. And now they started charging for it for students because they want to be a residential campus, which um, heads up Champlain. You're in Burlington. There is nothing to do there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Under the age of 21, there's nothing to do there. Because mm-hmm. all the venues are 21 plus. That's true. It's very true. Yeah, and Higher Ground is so hard. Higher Ground, which is their like concert venue, is so far away. It's like a mile away, and I'm like, I'm not paying for a cab. So you have to pay to park now, yeah. and then get. Trans- I don't care. Do you have to pay for anymore. transportation. No, they. Um, so if you park down, if it it, it it differs by school, but at Champlain it was when I was there parking at Lakeside was free, and then they also gave you a free. They called it a Catma card where you would call a taxi cab and it would be covered from Lakeside to your dorm. Um, yeah. I don't think we had that when I was there, but I, we had something if it was, if the shuttle wasn't running. Yeah, that's it. If it's past shuttle hours, you yeah. can use that and it would give you a free cab ride. Yeah. I got out of a parking ticket once by using that. Yeah. Because, yeah, it was at, like, I got home at 9.30 at night, which was past, you could park on campus between, like, 9 and something or other. Um, it was before like eight o'clock, and I had woken up at like seven fifty, ready to go. And my rap, my pet rabbit, had thrown litter everywhere, and I had to clean that up. And I ended up getting out there at like eight o five. There was a parking ticket, and I said, "This is, this isn't right," because I had to clean this up. I didn't have a one of those Catma cards, and I'm a girl. I don't want to <laughs> be down in the middle of like waiting for a bus in the middle of the night in Vermont when there's no one around. Especially since, like Tyler said, it wasn't the best situation always. Yeah. So I went and was like, you need to take away this parking ticket because it's your fault. And they said, yeah, it is. So I don't have to pay the parking ticket. We were like five minutes late too. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. So, but it's different for every campus. So if you go to a campus where they require freshmen to live on campus, but they allow you to have your car, like there's, it seems like Casey doesn't really want to live on campus. So there's, there are ways to get off uh, campus. Casey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, my uh, my college or university um, had, you had to pay for parking, mm-hmm. um, but it also depended, the parking, like, sticker that you put on your car, um, the price for it depended on how many credits you were taking, um, so it's like, if you're a commuter taking only a few credits, then, you know, you paid less, um, but then also, they wouldn't check for parking ticket, or parking stickers, after a certain time so Mm -hmm. like I don't know it was like after day classes and then weekends you can park wherever you wanted um and then there is a specific parking area in the parking garage that was designated only for commuter students during the week um at night it was like you know you can park wherever but yeah it was uh it was a a pretty good deal I would say it's a pretty good system yeah I would say we never had like a designated spot for commuters and so kids would just come in, usually late, 
So they're, like, trying to find the quickest spot possible mm-hmm. and just park, like, illegally somewhere. Just pay the yeah. ticket or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but they needed... And then the parking lot... My school was on a hill. So the parking lot's at the bottom of the hill. Oh, so you have to walk <laughs> up. So then it's, like, yes. a mile up to your classes because all the classes are at the very top of the hill. So if you're running late and you have to park at the bottom of the hill and you don't have time to wait for the bus, you're, like, running up that hill. I was usually sweating when I got to class. It was fun. <laughs> um, there are also different benefits to living on campus versus living off campus. Obviously, in an apartment, you don't have the RA policing you. We don't police. Um, but you, you get know. on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Stop resisting. People were like, we're, "You're policing us," and I was like, "You're drinking with the door open." And I walked by. That's not police. That's just common sense. <laughs> um, so there's, you know, the the lack of supervision um in an apartment um which is good and bad in its own way still don't recommend drinking with the door open no. if you live off campus either because then you just more trouble yeah i think don't leave your door open it's, uh, it's a dangerous <laughs> world we live in <laughs> r.a. <is> police <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> but um yeah so i mean i had friends i lived on campus for all four years because i couldn't I've talked about this before, I couldn't get, like, a part-time job around this area because whenever they would need me most, like, if I worked in retail, they would need me for Black Friday, and I'd be like, I'm in Boston for Thanksgiving. Um, So I didn't end up, I I couldn't get a job in the area, so I couldn't pay rent, and I said, all right, I'm just living on campus all four years. But I had roommates who lived um, in the area and who rented apartments in um, Burlington because they had extra, extra jobs or their parents were helping them out. Um, and they loved it, and it was South great Burlington. to go hang out with them. Baby. It was so sketchy walking down there and then. <laughs> South Burlington. Uh, I've never been to Burlington. I feel like I should go. I'm just not either. South Burlington. Burlington's fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's a great Just avoid city. South Burlington a minute. Yeah. Quite. Another uh, point towards uh, recommending living on campus, especially like the first year, is uh, my school would have their uh, five weeks of welcome. Mm-hmm. And um, so it would be like W-O-W, wow, week. Weeks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so they would have uh, weeks of welcome for like five to six weeks um, to make sure that like students were happy and that they were everything they had was accommodated. Um, and from when I was a freshman to when I graduated, it has become like a much bigger and bigger ordeal um, to the point where like Bed Bath & Beyond was there under like a Ooh. tent. They had um, just like a whole bunch of like big name stores underneath the tent and they're like, if you forgot anything at home, come to this tent and like purchase whatever you forgot. Um, and so it's, it's things like that that I think, like, people don't think about. It's like if you have to commute, then commute, but if you have the opportunity to live on campus, then, like, they roll out the red carpet for freshmen. Even living in an apartment off campus, I feel like you lose out on a lot of opportunities to, like, go do stuff on campus because, I mean, like, even if you live near campus, it's so far. (laughs) Yeah, and so... um, Sorry, on campus. No, 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 I was going to say right the same thing. Yeah. Is, yeah, for a lot of the dorms, it's very close to campus. Mm-hmm. And then when you live off campus, depending on where the school is, you might have to take a little hike to get to campus or to take walk, a car ride. You have or to bike, you have to hike. And um, it becomes a hassle, especially if, you know, it's nice hanging out with the kids that live on the dorm, even, yeah. you know, as you get up and you decide if you want to move out in this apartment. It's like, ah, I got an hour yeah. in between classes. Do I really want to go back to the apartment yeah. and then turn around and come back? Or do I stay on campus? Do I go to the dorm and hang out? So that's something yeah. to throw in there. I think living on campus freshman year is a great idea because then, especially if you live off campus, commuter students are infamous for having no friends on campus because mm-hmm. they're going to and from and it's, like I said, it's more difficult to get to events on campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can talk to people in your class and hang out but they're like oh let's go back to the dorms or let's go into the cafeteria and if you're a commuter student then you don't have a meal plan and mm-hmm. it gets they don't have enough guest passes or whatever so um that also, helps you like, build those sorry. relationships not as like willing to come back to campus because yeah. like if you have class and then go back to your apartment for the day and then let's say like something's happening yeah. that night on campus chances of you going back Unless you're, like, a really motivated person. I wasn't. So I, like, once I was home, I was home. The less I feel, um, the better. 
Yeah. But my, I also live, like, 20 minutes, like, a URI kids who live off campus live mm-hmm. by the beach, which is, like, yeah. 20 minutes from campus. So it's, yeah. like, another 20-minute drive back to campus. Just what happened when I lived at Spinner? I didn't do anything sophomore year because it was over in Winooski, which was a town over. It's not that far for if you're, like, going for classes, but... I would, like, go and hang out in my friend's dorms if I had to go to an event or a club meeting later at night because then I would have to wait for the shuttle, and it was just awful process. If I didn't have the shuttle, I would have to drive my car over, and I wasn't technically supposed to park anywhere, but I did, so it was, like, chancing a ticket. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's it's maximum effort, and I think, I mean, I, I met a lot of friends freshman year through living in the dorms, friends that I still have to this day, Um so it, it, that's what I recommend is, you know, living on campus because there's that t- cl- t- uh, tight-knit community. Um, and it seems like the person asking this question isn't very interested in living on campus, but I think there are a lot of benefits that you're not looking at. Yeah, I would do throw a counterpoint to mm-hmm. that is when you're off campus and you're walking to campus, mm-hmm. even when I lived at North Place, yeah. and it was three, four blo- three blocks away. Two miles. It was far. <laughs> uh, you would pass a bunch of different houses on the way, uh, in this case fraternities on the way, mm-hmm. and so you actually meet people as you're walking too. Mm-hmm. So not living on campus people. is a little inconvenient, but at the same time you meet people just by walking yeah. by and a lot of times doors are open and like hey what's going on you go yeah. here and some of the times it's no I go to the UVM it's mm-hmm. up the street <laughs> oh okay mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so, but I feel like junior senior year too you're kind of at the point where you're ready to move off campus yeah. if you have lived there for yeah. two years yeah so it's like nice to like still be in school but get that independence and I feel like like having a house kind of like taught me a lot of responsibilities paying bills taking care of the house yeah. cooking for myself yeah, it's different. I, I was going to say, also, uh, moving off campus, like, junior or senior year, um, it's like you've already established, like, friendships yep. that you've created while you were on campus. And then you've also possibly, like, joined organizations on campus. And so you're not, like, trying to create that community. It's like you've you've already created it. And so now you're more motivated to uh, join in on activities on campus once you yep. move off campus. Yeah. And again, there are be- there are benefits to living in an apartment. I mean, you don't have quiet hours. Um, you probably have your own room, whereas um, as a yeah. freshman, you probably share a room with someone else, um, which is not the best. But um, so you you probably have your own room. You have your your place to sort of remove yourself. They're probably more lax about being able to put nails in the wall and things like that. Um, probably, I don't know for sure, uh, but there, there are different benefits too. So it's not, it's not the worst choice to live on your own, but do also remember rent is a thing. Well, yeah, I was going to bring that point up where depending on where you're living and if you decide to go off campus to get an apartment and especially if you're sharing it with a larger group of friends, Mm -hmm. it can actually be cheaper than going through the college and doing that. And also you save money on uh, board so mm-hmm. all the you know the food that you get on campus yep. is normally you pay one flat fee or whatever you, you decide to do for your meal plan now you have to go shopping every week yep. and you have to cook mm-hmm. for yourself as Mackenzie mentioned so depending on what you're buying and what you're cooking yep. you could be potentially saving a bundle there too and uh, in my case it was with four other people well three other people including myself so four total and we just rotated once a week yep. it was somebody else's turn to buy groceries and we all just kind of pitched in to cook and um, college cooking, go check it out. Little uh, <laughs> plug. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's quality. quality Although cooking. I find I find that tends to be a six of one, half dozen of another because yeah. like living off campus can be cheaper with rent, but that's out of pocket costs. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have the money up front for that, you don't have a job, your parents can't help you out with the rent, then you're struggling to pay rent every month, and that I feel like brings the joy out of college. <laughs> Um, I'm, I mean, I, we've talked about before, I've got loans, I'm still paying off my, my living expenses from freshman year, but, um, I mean, I, it, for me, that was, it was time for me to save things that I ended up having to stay in off-campus, off-campus housing, so it was still through the school, but I didn't have a meal plan, so I had to buy groceries and all that, it was great to not have to pay rent on top of that, though. Yeah. Um, so it depends on 
like if you're in my situation where you can't get a job off campus. I also had a friend who worked literally 80 hours a week to pay her rent. And I thought you were going to say 80 hours away. I was like, what? <laughs> How did she do that? She worked literally 80 hours a week just to pay rent. And I said, that's ridiculous. She mm -hmm. said, yeah, but I'm not going to have debt. And I'm like, but you don't have a life. Yeah. <laughs> on top of classes? On top of classes. Uh, and she's like, it's great. And I'm like, when was the great. last time you slept? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So where did she work? Were you saying it her eighty hours? She had like two different jobs. Oh, okay. Oh wow. It's like was she a waitress or something? Three. Yeah. <laughs> she she worked a bunch and she but like we never saw her outside of class. Yeah. And then she became an RA because she was like, I can't afford this. I'm like, no, duh. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the other thing too, is that like I had to become an RA to be able to enjoy living on yeah. campus while also it like not having to pay that much. Yeah. So that, that worked out really well. So the second question is, if I, if I live near my college, should I commute or live on campus? Um, I think that you should try to live on campus, but uh, coming from myself who went to uh, a school that's 60% a commuter school, um, a lot of people lived nearby campus, if not like 10 minutes away. Um, the MBTA um, commuter rail stop was at my campus, so a lot of people from South Boston or just in Boston would commute to campus from the commuter rail, which is extremely convenient. Um, but I would also n never see those people at night or at clubs or organizations. Um, and like those are typically people who like uh, are not your average like traditional student. Like they're typically like uh, people with like families to raise and they don't have a lot of money. But bring the kids to the club. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gotta like, let loose. not that kind of club. Not that kind of club. <laughs> like <laughs> dance club, bowling club. Yeah, dance club. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, but no, you're right. Like bring them to the club. Like let them whatever. They're, just, they're just an appendage, not like an additional person. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, um, I think I've seen like a couple. I think my campus did have a, a daycare which helped out with yep. people who have families. Um, <laughs> but, you know, again, I like we had said earlier, there'd be commuters who would stay over people's, um, like, residence hall rooms because they had organizations at night and they just didn't want to, like, go to their car and then drive home and then drive back. Even though, like, these people would live 10 minutes down the street, it was just, like, easier to camp out in people's rooms. That's um, why you make friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like for a couple hours. And then it, deal with it. it there's also like it for RAs like living in a residence hall like, like I I've been uh conditioned to say residence hall instead of dorm room. <laughs> uh, me too, but I give up. <laughs> I'm, I'm too I'm embedded in my brain. Um <laughs> no, but I think that also living on campus like you get uh programs that yep. RAs have to put on and so then you're you're able to you know, participate and get free things, you know, kind of things that you pay for already, but it's <laughs> it's in a new, exciting way that you get to make new friends. Um, I think... I, go on. No, I was going to say, I think if the reason that you're not living on campus is because you have a family or kids, there are some schools that have, like, a housing option for families. Mm. I think you or I had one. Um, where it's, like, a separate apartment or complex... And it's just for students who either have, like, children, spouses, something like that. I don't think there's a lot of uh, apartments, so yeah. it is probably limited. But um, if you're really interested, you could probably put in a request for it or just look more into it, look into schools with that option. I think uh, another thing that uh, Bridgewater also did recently was uh, they just allowed um, co-ed rooming. Yep. Um, so it's like a, a guy and a girl could live in the same room uh, directly. Um, so it's like, again, if you have a spouse or any type of situation, then you can, that's, it's allowed to, to do that. Um, yeah. I think the question, if you're a traditional student, the question isn't whether like you have a family to take care of, but you're going from high school to college right away. I think the question to ask is, how often do I think I'm going to go home? Because yeah. yeah. you're going to be home six out of seven nights a week, don't go to campus. Yeah. Don't live on campus. 
Um, if you know that you're not ready to have the independence of going to campus and being on your own, that's fine. Not everyone is ready for that at 18. Um, but don't pay for the housing. Don't incur the debt. Don't ask your parents to pay for it. It doesn't make sense. You could be saving money doing that. Um, I had one of one of the guys in my dorm room in my dorm freshman my residence hall first year. <laughs> I mean, it's we were we were, we were told to t- call him first years too. Um, in my residence hall first year, he lived in Williston, which is 15 minutes away from Champlain, and he would go home every weekend. Uh, and then he would come home, or he would come back to um, Burlington, and then like half the time during the week he would go home again. And I was like, Why are you paying for this? <laughs> Yeah, and especially, like, with my school having a lot of people who live nearby to, you know, pay for housing, Mm -hmm. um, which is, is again, what I recommend personally, Um, but then they would be with roommates that they didn't like, Mm -hmm. so then instead of trying to, like, make rooming agreements with their roommates, they would just go home every weekend or almost every night. Yeah. Um, And, I mean, it's, it's sad that, like, then their roommates kind of, like, win in like that not compromising situation because they're just kind of like oh one less person let's take over the room (laughs) um but then it's like you're still paying out your pocket or your parents pocket for a room that you're not using yeah I feel like it's hard to to tell if like you're gonna be that kind of person like even if you do live close you don't know if you're gonna be the kind of person that doesn't Mm -hmm. do well in college so if you do decide to live on campus and maybe after like first semester realize that it's not for you take that step to move out and save yourself from the debt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't just keep going with it yeah. and like going home because you're gonna regret that. And we've seen too many kids. We talked about this. We've yeah. seen like so many kids who just like stay the full year but are never in their dorm rooms. Yep, yeah. which is crazy. And that's that's ridiculous. That's like five thousand dollars a semester. Yeah. So you could be saving five. $5,000. Plus all the gas you're using, too, to get home. Okay, yeah. 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 To, the, the gas that you're using, um, or if you are if you don't live close enough or you don't have a car on campus, the buses and stuff that you're yeah. paying for. Like, the and flight also, all the way back to California for yeah. the weekend. <laughs> Every weekend. It adds up. It adds up. <laughs> Or even, um, like, if you eat at home and you yeah. don't eat at school, you're not using the meal plan that you paid for. That's usually that's rolled into dollars. The, yeah, so that's not fun. Yeah, Yeah. It's, uh, I obviously lived on campus when I was in Vermont because it was far away, so I wasn't <laughs> making that commute every day. Uh, but my wife uh, went to Riviere, which is very close by to where she grew up and where we live now. It's still, it's probably actually closer now where, where we live, but... She commuted every day of her college life, saved a bundle of money, does not have any debt now. Uh, She regrets it, at least not doing the first year and meeting people. The first month in particular was extremely lonely. Uh, This is not part of the question, but we did talk about clubs and taking your kids to clubs. (laughs) So the way that she got her friends was she joined drama club and met a bunch of people that way and then was able to stay in their dorm rooms during mm-hmm. that kind of awkward I have an hour to kill type, yeah. type phase instead of going to the library. So should you commute or live on campus? You said it depends on how you feel. I say it depends on your financial situation. Yeah, and it's kind of a it's, mix. It's, it's, def- it's definitely yeah, a, it's mix. a mix. So I think that you need to consider both of those options and Ideally, what Mackenzie said, take the first semester and live on campus, get to make those connections, yeah. see how you feel, and then decide if you want to commute every day and take it on for the second semester. Also, look at the reasons you're leaving if you go for a semester and then you, you go home. So if it's because of the roommate situation, see mm-hmm. if you can get different roommates. Or if it's because you just don't feel at home on the campus, you don't like it, look into transferring instead of just singularly just saying, well, I'll move off campus so that I don't have to be around there that often. You still want to enjoy your education. Even if you are commuting, It's you still want a college that fits you. It's, that's still an important part. Not three more years of being miserable. Not three more years of being miserable, but you're at home. Yeah. And another uh, thing, if you decide to commute and you live, like, right next door to the campus, um, then, like, another thing to consider is, like, well either befriend a lot of people in the residence halls and like stay with them during the daytime and then so you have like place to go or um 
get make your car, which I saw a lot of people did. Um, an RV? Just, uh, <laughs> just live in your car. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, if you're paying for parking, you might as yeah. well just stay there. Yeah. <laughs> if they accommodate RV parking, no. <laughs> I would say put like a survival kit in your car. Um, just like snacks and a blanket, you can go to your car to nap during the day. Uh, a lot Brilliant. of people did that. It's so it's so useful. I work so far from where I live right now. Yeah, and then and, <laughs> and then another take so many car naps. <laughs> it's useful. It's definitely. so great. A little nappuccino. Love it. <laughs> Um, but like, especially on my campus, parking was impossible, especially during the week when like commuters would come and park, they would, they would take up all the parking, not blaming the commuters. I mean, you got to go to class. Um, but so during the, during the daytime, there would be absolutely no parking. And so a lot of commuters would get to campus to get a good parking spot at like sometimes like 6.30, 7 a.m. and their class wouldn't be till like 8.30. So they would get there, kind of like pick a spot and then just sleep. So it's some determination. It's yeah, not do that. Quite quite a couple of my friends would do that, and I'm like, yeah, it's a it's a plan, and it's a cheap plan. (laughs) plan. (laughs) You're saving money. Definitely a plan. It's they're saving money, so I mean, they got to do what they got to (laughs) do. They get someone on campus so you can stay with them. That too. Yeah. I mean, it's whatever. So that when you break up, it's not (laughs) awkward. (laughs) Yeah. Get out of my RV. (laughs) Yeah. Just just. uh, Whatever the guest policy is there. <laughs> I know kids that uh, would also bring one of those, like, hammocks that you can, like, wrap yourself yes. in. They would just tie it to the trees. I mean, if you're comfortable sleeping in public Hammock like that. Yeah. It's college. Everyone sleeps in public. Like, it's not, like, yeah. a traditional. It's, like, you tie it's, like, it's, like a blanket. Like, you know there's, like, the flat ones? Yeah. And then there's the scoopy ones? Scoopy ones. The scoopy ones. Scoopy ones. <laughs> scoopy ones, yeah. Oh. So you could like cover yourself. That's the official yes. thing oh. like, for them. So yes. it's like dark. I get you now. Yeah. I thought you were just like folding a t-shirt and then. <laughs> you like for real? No, it's an actual yeah. hammock. I get, I get it. It's yeah. not like a blanket that you just. Yeah, but they're also useful. <laughs> just roll yourself in a blanket and lay there on the quad. In <laughs> between two trees. Enjoy Honestly, the not something that I would put past college students. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. no. It's uh, there was a group of people I know who had hammocks mm-hmm. and they would uh, just you know set up a hammock. Wherever they went. I mean, I was a little jealous when I walked by and saw them like napping in like their cocoon. So but I. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a nice day, you don't even need the hammock. Just roll it on the quad, like. Oh yeah. Bring the blanket. nap is the grass. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> bring a nice sweatshirt and just stuff it on your head. It's great. Pull the ties to the. Oh no! I just meant use it as a pillow. Oh. <laughs> Get the uh, sunglasses. I'm all about cocooning. <laughs> <laughs> just like pitch a tent in that I mean that's home. really good I if you're if you suffer from migraines that's a great idea use it as a cocoon I had migraines for a while oh I thought you were talking just, about the tent no I, I mean tents are a good idea too but like if you just, suffer from migraines get a tent <laughs> pitch a tent but no like just in general or like if you're commuting and you have a really bad migraine it sucks just take a little nap put like a blanket or a coat or a sweatshirt over your eyes and your pitch car pitch a tent it's in great. the library it works just in the library. <laughs> I mean, there's no signs that you can't. I have made my so many signs. times this is, this in the library. <laughs> I'm doing it quietly. <laughs> I'm sleeping. Was, um, oh my gosh, this is Peter. Shout out Peter. Love Peter. Parker? No, not, not that oh. one. Yeah. Different Peter that I went to school with, and he would fall asleep literally everywhere. Mm. And everyone knew him. He's the sweetest kid. It was a Facebook group called Pictures of Peter, Peter Sleeping. Oh. And they would take pictures and post it to this group. He was part of the group. He loved it. And he Absolutely. said he kind of misses it. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm really, I kind of miss that part. I'm this, like, yeah. I did too, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Yeah. Third question is, how do you choose the best roommate for college? Um, there are many ways. You um, don't choose the roommate. <laughs> the roommate <laughs> chooses roommate. you. <laughs> sometimes. Uh. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> um, so a lot of times with um, as you're going in as a first year, it can be random, and a lot of places will just do randomly, but you can also choose someone. Uh, like if you're going to college with someone you know from high school, you can write their name down. Let's talk about why that's a bad idea in a minute. 
Uh, you can also, if there, there, a lot of places do Facebook groups. I know Zemi is a big thing. You can meet people on Zemi and um, Twitter, Instagram, all the different social medias. What does Zemi? Yeah, it's but, a college yeah. application platform thing. There's a whole okay. article about it on College Express. Hmm. Link uh, down below. <laughs> <laughs> it will connect you to. Um, you can like record videos. It's and send them to colleges, and then they also have communication platforms for you to use where you can connect with counselors and people that go to the college already and then as a first year once you're accepted and admitted then you can start talking to people there and possibly find your roommate but I know a big thing is Facebook groups and that's where I found my roommate Ariana Quadrini I love you um come back to me <laughs> she lives in she lives in Denver and she's so far away Madrid wow but <laughs> <laughs> um, so we Found each other on the Facebook group for um, Champlain people. I don't remember how. I think there was like some quiz and we had a couple we things passed. in common. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a quiz of like, are you compatible? Yeah, a lot of places will do compatibility quizzes. And we were semi compatible and we started chatting and we were like, oh, I li- I, here are some of my things. Like, I like to go to bed around this time. I like to go to bed around this time. I'm an early riser. I'm not. It can be quiet. I can do this. I can do that. Um, and then like at the end she or we're, we're talking she goes I just have one final question before we decide and I said okay what and she goes can I have the top bunk if we get bunk beds I said yeah sure whatever and then I had a roommate and so when you great. know you have the perfect roommate when they yeah. like want the bed that you don't want I would have taken either I wasn't picky about it but, I had the top um, bunk it was <laughs> I love the top pain. bunks no because like anytime I wanted to like watch TV or something like I'd bring my laptop up and then I'd forget like food so I'd have to jump back down and come back up. Oh, I forget I, like like my it was just <laughs> dying. It I makes created, me sound lazy, but it was a lot yeah. of work. I created shelves on yeah. the oh, it's, side. I couldn't do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Or or like one of those um have like a table up there against I don't know yeah. something there's, something there's, that like hangs off your bed. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. The cat the bed caddies. <laughs> my space. <Yeah. laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so yeah, that's it. That's yeah. So using the social medias to connect with people, don't always just go with the people that you know. So my best friend asked me recently um, why I was talking about moving with this friend of mine from college, and she goes, "Oh, when I ask you to move in, you don't want to, but when he asks you to move in, you say sure, and you start looking for apartments." Did you and say I, that's why? I said no. <laughs> I said you're my best friend, and I want to keep it that way. Uh, best friends don't always make best roommates because mm-hmm. you don't want to. Um, someone's playing basketball over us apparently. <laughs> um, because you don't like have living with someone in those small confines. There is very different than hanging out with them a bunch. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to lose friends. My brother lived with a couple of his friends and then he stopped talking to them and then they moved out and he's friends with them now. That's why I don't live with friends. <laughs> yeah. I became uh, best friends with uh, a girl that I met at orientation, mm-hmm. and we, well, there's two people I became best friends with. One of them I wanted to room with, um, and the other one I, I kind of knew. I was, she, she's, she told me, we remember we were sitting at the orientation table, and they're just like, talk to the person next to you, and I was like, oh, hey, how's it going? Um, Is that loser? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Um <laughs> So I was like, what's your major? She's like, aviation. And I was like, what the heck is aviation? That's like the first time I ever heard the word aviation. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, I'm a graphic designer. She's like, cool, I don't know anyone who does that. And it was, it was pretty interesting. Two Did people. you design the side of her plane? I mm-hmm. would love to do that. Awesome. If she watches this, then she should hit me she up for that. She definitely watches this. I would hope so. I'm pretty sure there's only two people that don't watch this. <laughs> In the whole wide world. Yeah. Yeah. And we know who they are. Yes. <laughs> we can stop people. Um, but and so we tried to room together and it fell through uh, with with another person that I had met at orientation um, not the one who is an aviation major but me and my now friend Shannon who is an aviation major uh, just a different one (laughs) sorry this story is getting confusing but basically I was roomed in a quad with three people who I wasn't that close with um and they they had parties in the room and I just wanted to sleep and I was studying I was I was boring my freshman year um and so we we I was talking to my friend from orientation and I was like let's room together um these people didn't like our roommates um so it worked out that way um and then second semester or second semester yep 
and then we were in a triple. We didn't. We both didn't like our third roommate, <laughs> but because we had each other, we yeah. we did good. That always like helps the bond. Yeah, yeah. Was, like one person, <laughs> a mutual yeah. hatred. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, we didn't hate her. She was just very messy. Yeah. Very, mm. very yeah. messy. That, that's one thing that and you would don't also, know until you move That's what usually on those quizzes you take. When, mm. and are, they, are you messy? Also, like even then, everyone lie, says yeah. no, and then they like, yeah, answer messy. honestly. Come on. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, put on the resume or the survey, like, your worst attitudes, because they will see your worst attitudes mm. at some point. It's also like, are you messy, or do you mind if someone else is messy? Exactly. Like two different questions. Yes. You can you can be like the cleanest person, and if you enjoy cleaning other people's messes, then you can room with mm-hmm. a person who is messy. But if you're someone who is clean and doesn't like other people who are not clean, then do not room with other people who are messy. <laughs> uh, learn that the hard way. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Messy people, I yeah, I was I thought I'd be able to like tolerate a medium. I didn't really know when I took the the quiz apparently i can't tolerate messy people just because like they're like even i'm fine like if it's medium. on your side yeah yeah but like when it starts coming into like my desk or like even right. like touches my bed <laughs> or or i'm like <laughs> no it's like yeah it's one thing to be like messy in the confines of yeah. your space but then if if you're messy and then something starts to smell mm-hmm. <laughs> then that's a whole new yeah. territory yeah. that you need to yeah. it, it affects the whole room plus my roommate my sophomore year I didn't like her very much we just like didn't get along she would leave fruit out all the time so she'd go home for like uh winter break or something and there'd be crumbs and food mm-hmm. out and I'm like I have to clean this because we're gonna get like bugs it's and, a safety like, hazard yeah. stuff in here like bugs and mice they bugs. get in the room yep. don't think they don't no. mold <laughs> so clean up your food <laughs> it's gross that's a yeah I think introducing a kitchen is a whole new element as well <sighs> Because mm-hmm. I lived with one of my buddies second semester of freshman year, and we got along famously. And then when we decided to move into an apartment, uh, we ended up getting a place that had a kitchen so we could all cook and, and enjoy. But dude does not know how to do the dishes, doesn't know how to soak a pan. Dishes are like a silent killer. Yeah, dishes on the side. No, they're not silent. Oh, they're passive aggressive. Wait, no, they're on the side. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. yeah. Extremely passive aggressive. And the worst is, I don't like pesto to this day because he used to make pesto sauce every night. Mm. Well, I in my head, it's every yeah. time. It's probably most, most a couple most. nights yeah. a week. Yeah. I'm guessing it we left it out. Time. <laughs> 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 nice. It's for the rest of your life. But yeah, it was just cleaning that pl- uh, pan of green grossness. Mm. And, um, Yummy. Uh, I had the roommate who. Um, I had, when I was in Dublin, we, I had two roommates. One of them I got along with really well at the beginning of the semester. That's all at the end um, because of just so much tension building, especially with our third roommate. Our third roommate cursed me at 3 o'clock in the morning. It happened. She was speaking in tongues. It was the scariest thing ever. And then I, I went to our other roommate who had her own room. She had two beds that she pushed together, and I was like, I don't feel comfortable living with her anymore because we shared a room and we were six inches apart. Like, literally, there was this much space between our beds. And I was like, I don't want to stay in this room anymore. And she's like, it's only a month. I think you can stick it out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's, it gets to a point where you have to check your, your mental sanity. And mm-hmm. if you can't keep, like, a good level head within, like, the amount of time that you're going to be living in that room, then you need to address the situation. Mm-hmm. Because it's like with with my situation of moving to the second room, um, it was sometimes torture. Yep. Um, with the microwave being right next to my head, she would she'd microwave like cheese burritos at two in the morning <laughs> after partying all night, um, and then bringing like a guy back into the room <laughs> afterwards. After the I, cheese burrito, yeah. sometimes. Yeah, the cheese burrito. <laughs> 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 she wakes you up. <laughs> Oh God, no! She, I don't think I can count how many times I had a conversation with her, and I think it was two conversations out of a whole semester. Yeah, you're making a cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Microwave that elsewhere. Yeah. It's like killing brain cells. <laughs> yeah. I also, I also know that I was kind of one of the bad roommates when I was mm. in Dublin because one of our roommates, the the one that cursed me at three o'clock in the morning, um, was not a social person. Like she came to. <laughs> She, she wasn't she didn't do the parties and stuff and we were like oh we'll just have people over to our apartment and we would like all hang out and like half the program would come there were 27 people in the program 
at one point we had 19 people in our room. Oh. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't a small room. It was a full apartment and she was like hiding in her bedroom and she had the door closed yeah. and we had the door to like the living area closed and it was really annoying to her. She's like, why does everyone have to be over here? And we're like, we're social people. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you knew this about us. And like, that's another instance of don't, live with people just because you know them because I ended up living with her because um, she was like we were in the same program and she goes I don't have anyone to live with in Dublin I was like yeah sure I'll live with you and did not do any research first I I did the same thing when I uh, went to DC on an internship for a summer Uh, I roomed with um, a girl in my sorority and I love her to death but she could be messy sometimes and uh, drove me up a wall. <laughs> um, thankfully, we didn't live in the same room, even though that's what we intended. But like, I it was a blessing in disguise that we li- we, we were in two separate rooms in the same apartment. Um, so then I didn't have to look at the mess in her room. It, it was just the common areas that I I fussed over, and then she went back to her room, and I was like, okay, we're we're best friends again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where like that roommate agreement comes in handy yeah. too. When I was in London, like, we didn't have that, and I lived in a suite, so, like, the kitchen was right next to this girl's room, and the kitchen also had the washer and dryer machine, and so on a Saturday night, I wasn't going out, it was, like, probably, like, 10, 30, 11, and I really needed to do my laundry, so I was, like, I'll just do my laundry, there and the girl, in there. yeah, right, yeah. It's, it's fine, well, the laundry machine, like, sings a little bit when, it do- when it's done for, like, two minutes, so it's kind oh, of annoying. Two minutes? Yeah. It's a long one. <laughs> you know oh. when it's done. And so I forgot that the girl who lives right there, she goes to sleep at like 7 o'clock at night, I guess. Um, and it was a Saturday, so I was like, I know it's a little late, but everyone's probably out, so it's yeah. fine if I do my laundry. Plus, it's like it's only annoying at the end. She heard me put the laundry in there. Like, I didn't even shut the door. And she just comes in. She's like, are you really doing your laundry right now? I was like, guess not. <laughs> not I don't have <laughs> socks. Yeah, I am. So I'll just be dirty tomorrow. And so she got, like, really pissed at me and, like, never talked to me for the rest of the time I was there. So maybe just, like, figure out, like, what people... Like, you quickly kind of realize what people like and don't like, but, like, figure out, like, uh, sleep times, schedules. So everyone's really different. Yeah, Yeah. I feel like for choosing the best roommate, freshman year is very difficult, but you guys are talking about the apps and, like, reaching out beforehand, which is great. I did none of that. And uh, I live with old Rob, which you two have heard stories of old Rob before, but... Uh, my freshman first semester was with old Rob, and he liked to parade around with his robe open, <laughs> playing Guitar Hero, and uh, yes, it was a nightmare, and I ended up moving in with two of my buddies for the second semester into a force triple, because it was supposed to be a double, and that worked out great, I ended up living with one of them for three years, so... You get to know people. Uh, Online might not be the best way to meet them, but you'll get a better idea rather than just getting put in a room with a random. And (laughs) when Kara said she wasn't the best roommate at one point, we have one of my buddies who lived with me for three years. Met him freshman year. He was a year behind me. And he is not a social kid at all. Super nice. Cleans up for pretty much everything. If we cooked, he cleaned and that was just kind of like his duty around the, the house, the apartment. And when we would go out, we would always try to get him to come out, but he didn't mm-hmm. most of the time. And so we got belligerent one night <laughs> and just kept knocking on his door and be like, Ah, it's all! Get out of the room! And he never came out, so wow. stick to your guns. <laughs> <laughs> on which side of the door? <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, on his side, because we eventually left. But, uh, yeah, know, know who you're rooming with. Yeah. Is, uh, mm-hmm. Definitely good, because he knew exactly what he was getting himself into. Yeah. And we're good. still friends. Mm-hmm. It's coming up the wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think also on the Facebook um, app, like, the way you could find a good roommate mm-hmm. was a lot of people would, and they send, like, a group, like, yep. set up a group with you that once you get accepted, like, yeah. accepted. Yeah. I feel like there was an mm-hmm. app that we went on through Facebook. And it, like, brought you into an internal group or something. Like that. I don't remember. Maybe. I think it's I got an email in a while. school. Yeah. They, I, I would say it's a, almost a guarantee that each school has at least some type of page app yeah. or something for, like, that designated class. <coughs> but a lot of people would go on there and just, like, write a small paragraph about themselves and be like, I'm looking for a roommate. And then, like, I would see a bunch of comments being like, I also, like... 
I just like that. Oh, I'm looking for a <laughs> yeah. That's it. Just one of, send one it. of my no personal I too am looking for a <laughs> But that's how, like, people got connected on social media in case you didn't know how it was done. (laughs) Shocker. Wow. One of my friends to this day posted on the accepted students class of 2018 page um, them skydiving right after (laughs) taking the um, tests that, you know, accept the whatever tests that you get. Um, and I was, I remember thinking, looking at that picture, I was like, what a weirdo. Like, he is such a weird person. And then, like, now we're best friends. <laughs> yeah. Was like, he uh, posted that in the group? Yeah. Just, like, he, not saying anything? Oh, no, he, he put, po- like, or he's we like, all... I want a roommate. <laughs> so, I remember, like, <laughs> we'll That's jump it. for you. <laughs> I'll oh jump for a roommate. <laughs> well, I mean, it was just funny, because, like, we, a bunch of people went to take, like, the math test, um, <laughs> Which I failed. <laughs> and then he posts on That's Facebook hard. an hour later. He's like, yeah, I took the test, and then I went skydiving. Like, I don't, I don't know what he if he was trying to get a roommate out of that, but I, I, I definitely, I'm like... For a sky <laughs> I can take math tests, and I skydive. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that we're just... Sounds like you're on, like, a matchmaker site or something. Yeah. It's, it's really, like, personal ads from the back of yes, the day yeah, with the newspapers. It is. Looking in search of him. Yeah. I would just like read through them sometimes to see like what weird things people would say oh, about yeah. themselves. Yeah. I'm like I don't want to be roommates with any of you. But <laughs> no, I want to go back and read. Oh. <laughs> I, I was admittedly very judgmental, and now looking back at it, I'm like most of these people are my friends that I, I made fun of. <laughs> yeah. That'll I was happen. like I'm just as weird. I just didn't show it as much. <laughs> so, I know one girl that was like I like the squirrels, <laughs> and then she ended up being the girl that lives next door to me, and she ended up. Just grabbing a squirrel from oh. outside, and it was her pet. <laughs> no, thank you. In the oh room, my like God. impressive. Yeah. That's I remember. Yeah, we had a, a Facebook group, mm-hmm. and Steve Pinkham. Shout out to you because we ended up becoming friends after, and he was one of the guys I moved in with second semester, or yeah, freshman year. And his profile picture, he's this like five foot eight Asian kid, cornrows. <laughs> and I was like. Damn! Wow. Who is this kid? And I was like, I'm never gonna talk to him. And just scroll past, and then later on, he became good friends. Shaved off all of his hair, looks good. Nice. Yeah. Tries new things. Yeah. Tries new things. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in his head. It's not skydiving, but it's something. Well, shaved head. Yeah. For our last question, uh, it is what are some non standard room, dorm room, dorm room essentials? What? Dorm room, <laughs> residential life, something like that. <laughs> so residence halls. Residence halls. Okay. That's what residence I halls. <laughs> residentials. <laughs> it's enforced now. <laughs> God. Um. So besides like the standard fridge, clothes, bed, laundry stuff. Yeah. Um. Some things I like to have was actually dryer sheets, not just for the dryer. Did you say what I think you're gonna say. Be impressed. I have two reasons for dryer sheets. One of them is <laughs> because it is a very t- small room and there's a lot of smells. <laughs> and some people have smelly feet or smelly shoes. So you can actually put the dryer sheets in your shoes and it helps with the smell a little bit. Also, there are mice that come into the room sometimes. <laughs> um, so actually if you put dryer sheets like along the walls, it kind of prevents the mice from coming into the room. Peppermint. Is that why you were? I put mine in the pillowcase. I just like the way it smells. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Impressive. Okay. Yeah. Always. Impressive. Pillow always smells great. I know. It always smells great. What is smart? Yeah. Um, something else. Especially the lavender scented one. Ooh, that'll help you sleep. I have that one right now. There you go. I don't put it in my pillow, but I might now. It will help you fall Try asleep. Lavender, <laughs> lavender essential oils. Sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like putting the oil on your pillow. I know yeah. some people do that, Essential. but then it's like just wet. Oh, <laughs> damp. Don't I've do that. Have you ever heard. seen those? No. no. Heard I, or no, but them. Febreze has a um, a spray bottle where you spray the pillow, you wait five minutes, and then you fall asleep. I okay. tried it once, God. and it was just like my pillow was wet. <laughs> That's why you wait five minutes. I waited. <laughs> Maybe it was like a ten minute. Put wait. it in front of a fan. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Fans. 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 Yes. Check the check if your residence hall they has air conditioning or any type of central heating. Most likely not. Mm. With like, yeah. if you're in a four triple, that's a lot of people in yeah. one room. A lot of stuff. Gotta get hot and get like one mm. that like attaches to your bed. So it's just yours. Yes. Just yeah, bring just like five. Like yeah. Clamp, clip clip lamp, lamp. Clip fan. Bring yeah. five fans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something else. 
I recommend is a like a steamer, a mini mm-hmm. steamer. Um, I don't like my clothes to be too wrinkly, yeah. and usually you have like limited space for your mm-hmm. clothes, so you have to like squeeze them, like bring, pull them, like not pull them, roll them up so they fit in yeah. the dresser. <laughs> so when they come out, they're all wrinkly. So. Yeah. A steamer is easier than an iron. You yeah. don't need like the board. I've recently, and I feel like they work yeah, I've recently gotten into steamers. I love them so much more than irons because you just take your shirt and you hang it up, and then you steam it, and you don't need the ironing board. They take up way less space. Yeah. Also, steamers for life. Sometimes, um, I, I think irons weren't allowed in my residence halls. We had uh, them, but they? you they had to have the auto off feature. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Steamers are probably the same. Not that probably. they're going to check, but <laughs> probably smart anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or if uh, if you don't want either of those, you can just take a shower and then put your clothes outside the shower. Does that, Does that work? That's work? a pro maneuver. Sometimes. It's uh, if you got the resources. It, I've tried it Maybe if home, it's like a small enough shower. Barrier, but like, it doesn't work for you? It doesn't work for me. Uh, maybe it depends on the clothes. If linen you have versus the extra cotton. quarters. I don't know. Do they still use quarters for oh, the dry cleaning? Mm-hmm. That's another thing. Too. Too. <laughs> <laughs> they also have dry cleaning. Yeah. Yeah, there are some because places... If you huck ice cubes in the dryer with your clothes, that's what's that helps too. Yeah. Oh that's, my I still gosh. do that to this day. Yeah. So then you're gonna need an ice rack yep. thing, right? Ice, ice tray. tray. That's what it's called. I was gonna add um, in a fridge. My school has Dry flex cleaner. dollars <laughs> yeah. on our ID cards, but sometimes the flex machines would break, and then no one would have quarters. They mm. would come to the RA and be like, "Hey, can I have quarters?" I'm like, "I'm sorry, I'm not a bank. I I don't have quarters yeah. myself." Um, Just pull out holes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I do not never, hide those. Never things. use your quarters. Always save them for laundry. Yeah. Yes. Have a backup. backup. You know, create a penny jar, mason jar, whatever it is. Have a backup. Start saving now. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. Save all your quarters. <laughs> That's real case. money right there. Honestly, I saw people come in and they'd be like, "These are my quarters," and it was like a pillowcase filled with quarters. Awesome. So I'm like, yeah. Smart. Only it's one also semester's worth. It if you want clean clothes, costs yeah. us two things: quarters, free laundry. And if you get mugged, it sounds like a weapon. <laughs> you can whip it around. Save the pillowcase rips and all the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just start checking. Yeah, that's money. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. something I don't recommend, and this is just a personal thing, is those um, laundry detergent pods. Oh, a lot of kids no get snacks, guys. Like, oh, they're not snacks. No, oh. please don't. Uh-huh. But I like I got them because they were like they traveled well and they were yeah, easy for storage. I and I got them, them but I found that like. They don't work that well with cleaning clothes. And, like, the little plastic stuff would, like, stick to your clothes, and it's not easy to come off. I use those the first two years, and then... Or even, I think, just the first year. Maybe the first year and a half. I don't remember. Yeah. I got rid of them at some point, because I was like, this is great. I use Mm -hmm. them... Because I was lazy, and I was, I was like, yeah, pod, throw it in. <laughs> you get a pod. Like <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I didn't want to think about it. Um, and then whenever I would go home, I'd be like, oh, measurement. Okay, this is yeah. a good amount. Um, when I cared, I would measure like yeah. that. But it's, when I didn't care, I just threw, I threw it in. Yeah. So, laziness. You should, you should also separate your laundry. Supposedly, I didn't do that for most of college. I, I did my freshman year. Yeah. I did my freshman year, and then I was like, uh, buck fifty for a load. Right, right. No, it's too, uh, it's everything's too going expensive. in one. It's. I mean, I'm mad that my school now I think is enrolling the laundry into the housing fee, so I'm mad that it's included now. But back then, I I would There's put so all much of my clothes. If it was included. Yes. Like, yes. I love shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really like these pants. <laughs> <laughs> I wore them for ten minutes. Yeah. There's a stain. You yeah. just have every single washer going yeah. one piece of clothing. <laughs> yeah. No, because then you'd be the, the worst person ever. I t- Everyone would hate you. Uh, All right. Does this ever happen to you guys when you go into the laundry room and your clothes are just like, thrown off? On oh, side, yeah. Soaking wet? You're clean. Yeah. 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 Like, seriously? Oh. You couldn't have at least put it on top. I always put a tables. timer on my watch yeah. on my phone and yep. I'd go down like yeah. two minutes after the timer left. One, It would just be soaking, like sitting on top of a dryer yep. and I'm like... It's literally been two minutes. Yep. yep. And then your clothes down. get stolen. Don't do your laundry on Sundays. I've lost yeah. five pairs of pants because of that. It, like, it's nice. I used to do laundry. I used to do laundry. So my pants. pants. <laughs> if you if you <laughs> come to our aid, you have to do shopping. She go thing. just open it up. What do uh, I want today? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it was a free for all. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
Maybe just keep an eye on your clothes. Just stand yeah. next to the washer dryer, or 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 if there's a study room next door, just study mm. next door. Watch <laughs> it from with afar. binoculars. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Stick it out. <laughs> but to go along with the laundry stuff, if you don't want to pay for dryer too, you could get a foldable dryer rack. Oh, yes, and just dry dryer rack clothes. Yeah. Especially like yeah, it like stuff. takes like twenty four hours. It does take a while, but your room smells good, so yeah. it helps with the smell. Yeah. Make sure it's not raining or humid because then it'll take longer. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. put a fan on it. There's, there's techniques. <laughs> yeah. You gotta look up the techniques. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, something else I had in my room was an electric like water kettle. Because I like to have like tea or hot water. I also had a lot of soup. We weren't allowed those. I wasn't allowed those I either. probably... No, I think I was allowed them. <laughs> check on your campus. To make Sorry, you're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, check on make sure you can have it. But it was like... It's like a hot plate? Um, or the kettle itself would it's hot. It's like... I think it's a kind of water heater. heater. What? You've never had a water heater? No. Oh, they're great. Oh, it has like a plate enough. that can Yeah. Oh, you, you oh, like, a it hot sounds like a... You I call it a hot plate. Oh, okay. I think we're talking about the same thing. We're probably talking about the same thing, but when I think of hot plate, I mean like... And I think... I'm thinking an actual hot plate. Yeah. It like heats up and it's just its own thing. This is one where you... It's two parts? It's two parts. Yeah. It's a kettle and then you put it on top and then the bottom yes. part heats up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I also wasn't allowed those. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> make sure you're allowed it. <laughs> but it's so really cool. quick. We confiscated like many of those as an RA. Yes. I was so. lucky. <laughs> takes like a minute. I, I don't know. Uh, the microwave was uh, my resource. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry, continue. No. Don't forget um, shower shoes. Football yes. Mm. That's really gross. Yes. Don't walk into the bathroom. Don't assume nasty. don't assume that anything is clean. Assume mm. that everything yeah. is dirty. Even if you just yes. saw the cleaners go into the bathroom, it's dirty. It's already. still what? dirty. Bacteria exists. Yes. It, it just the worst. Okay. Oh. It's a shower caddy. Oh, yeah, oh, shower shower caddy. Caddy's good. Yeah. So um cool. you got mine from LL Bean, it still works. It's yeah. great for traveling. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, actually yeah. really good. I got mine from a sterilite bin. From a what? Great. Sterile. Oh, no, my mind, like, <laughs> folded up. man? <laughs> from a man. <laughs> you can unfold it and hang it on stuff. Yes. That one, yeah. You or you could use the little, the little, like, oh toolbox kind, too. That's the one I had. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it was a, mine was, like, a cloth one, but it's, like, a... Ah, uh, yes, yeah, I know like, exactly. It can't get wet. Yes. Like that. Uh, it's really great. So I'm just throwing with the holes in it. Oh, yeah. It's, like, what, like, food? Yeah. Yeah. No, There's so many guys. Yeah. yeah, I would I would suggest ones that either dry quickly or that wouldn't if it's in like a dark damp area wouldn't collect mold because yeah. it's constantly being in the mm-hmm. shower. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's good good resource. Mm-hmm. What, yeah. else, what else we got? On there? Um, mattress mm-hmm. cover. Mattress cover. Mattress yes. cover. Bed bug protector because bed Ugh. bugs are real. I don't want to talk about it. It's very <laughs> common in colleges. There's a spray that you can spray that will like allegedly kill them. If they exist, so you just spray it on and then. If they exist. Or also just wash If they exist in your bed. I know they exist. They exist in your bed. And then you put the mattress <laughs> cover on top of it. They also have pillow. <coughs> excuse me. You're going to have to bring your own pillow, but they also have pillow covers. Yeah. So you use one of those two to keep them out of my pillow. They're really, really gross. Yeah. And also hard to get rid of. <coughs> wash your sheets. Off, more Two often. pairs of sheets. Yes. Yeah. One on, one in retainer. And then wash your comforter. Like, I mean, you can wait till you go home, I guess, to do that, but. Just wash it. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just wash it. <laughs> just do it. Be sanitary. Think think of those things. Mm-hmm. That's uh, for not shower related stuff, but those <laughs> fold out cubes. You know, like the wire mesh ones. Oh yeah. Just to put stuff in. For storage. Yeah. It not only is it uh, easy and useful for storage, but you can break them down super easy too. Mm-hmm. It's just got that circle peg with the cross in it, mm-hmm. and it yeah. all pops together. Um, super useful. I got a trunk at Bed Bath & Beyond, mostly because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. <laughs> I was like, I want a trunk to go to Hogwarts. So, but um, a lot of people would have a trunk because then you can fit a bunch of stuff in there. I put all of my clothes in my trunk all, all four years um, because it was just easier. And then it's like, here are all my clothes. They're up. And then They're just done. get some bed risers, put it yep. under the bed. Yeah, bed risers good. Yep. I always thought it was cool having like a high bed too. Yeah. yeah. It's it safe. You want to save like, a lockbox? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you want like a lockbox so that you can put things like your insurance card, your social security card, your yes. passport if you live near a place that's near the border like I did. We went up to Canada and that's not the, those documents that you don't want lying around. Um, you want to be able to put them in a safe place and then you can hide them inside your trunk. Yes. Smart. 
I also think extra chargers because mm-hmm. I always had like a charger in my room and then a charger in my backpack and then maybe one more lying around somewhere because I always mm-hmm. lost them. Headphones. And I'd be like in class, headphones. my phone or laptop yeah. would die. Yeah, yeah. yeah and bring headphones. multiple headphones because those things get lost. They die. People they steal die. them. Lose them. Um, yeah. Break them. Your oh, headphones yeah. die? Right. Oh, yeah. It's a, like the Bluetooth. Oh. Uh, the Bluetooth also. I took out the wire. Even the plug in <laughs> ones, sometimes it just like, I don't know why, but. There are a couple pairs where I could only hear out of the left ear. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's like because it gets line. tangled or whatever. Probably. It doesn't yeah. matter. That happens Life hates me. Too. That's fine. It's <laughs> the worst things happen. Yeah. I think um, it's not allowed in most dorm rooms, but the George Foreman grill. <laughs> <laughs> High quality. Or, or you can talk to your RA and have the residence hall buy a George Foreman grill. Oh. oh. Right. Is that what you did? No, but, uh, I, I wish but that. you can. <laughs> <laughs> it might be yeah. an option. We had a kitchen in the last room that I when I was in RA. We had a kitchen, and you could keep stuff in the kitchen. And several people had Keurigs there yeah. that they um, would use, and they were like, "You have to buy your own pods, but you can use this, or don't touch my stuff." Um, so you you were allowed to have trust. things, but it had to be stored in the kitchen. I'm like. There are going to be a lot of people with hot plates still in the room, yeah. and you know what? I confiscated a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, "This has to stay in the kitchen." And there were a lot of people that followed the rules too. There's also someone who lit a candle warmer, did not turn it off before vacation. We uh, had to call vacation. campus safety. Yeah. Um, for a different reason, I don't remember why, but campus safety threw hot wax all over everything. We're like, yeah. "Now we have to deal with this yeah. student did, uh, being mad at us." Did Ricky Martin song start playing when that happened? No, because <laughs> that would have been. Fantastic. No, but it was just like hot wax everywhere. It was gross. And we're like, you're not supposed to have this. Number one. Number two, sorry, you got all over everything. We didn't touch it. Yeah. Yeah, well, not our the fault. George Foreman grill, though. You can make steaks, can make burgers, you can panini press if those you, If you live in an apartment, the George Foreman grill is the best thing to have. It really is. I use my George Foreman all the time. Essential kitchen. Oven. Don't Especially if it's it. the one with the removable <laughs> plates, because then that just goes in the dishwasher. Right, yeah, I didn't dishwasher have that one, oh. unfortunately. Yeah, the old-fashioned one. I had Mach 1, George Foreman. <laughs> 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 my uncle didn't want his anymore. He's like, take it to college. I'm like, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Or um, if you live in a cold area, heat a blanket. Because um, yeah. you can also just like, if you're one of those people that you're bold and brazen, you can bring it to the library and just plug it into the wall, study mm-hmm. for a long time, be warm. It takes some confidence. You may look weird, but you're warm. It's, On that note, yes. um, hot water bottle or a heating pad and definitely ice packs. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, if you're like me, I get injured a lot. First, first aid kit in general. Oh, yeah. yes. Medicine. First aid. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. first aid kits can come in handy. I yeah, I needed everything in my first aid kit all the time. Mm-hmm. You I feel like need band aids. Um, a always. sewing kit is also handy because I would. Not rip. if you don't know how to use <laughs> 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 yeah. it. Otherwise, you just yourself. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Do not be inebriated when using it. Mm. Um, <laughs> Or if you don't know how to use it, find a friend that does know how to use it, and then just have... <laughs> and then you have a sewing kit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you can sew, I got the kit. Yeah. <laughs> two, two come together. In general, just learn how to sew simple things, like how to fix a hole in a shirt. Sew a button it's on. It's a YouTube video There's, way. Yeah, a yeah. YouTube video or a WikiHow page. Yep. You know, there's so many I actually interests. watched a YouTube video to do it, and it worked for like a day. And then I go back to the shirt, and it was undone. So just yeah. make sure you did it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I probably didn't. Obviously well, didn't. Yeah. Just duct tape it. Just, <laughs> duct tape. Just Stop. get a new duct tape. Shirt. Bring, Bring duct tape. Duct tape. Yeah. duct tape is useful for everything. Duct tape, masking tape. Don't put them on the walls. Nope. <laughs> put them on everything but else. If there is a problem that cannot be yeah, solved by duct tape, video. Tylenol, or a yes. big cry, it's not worth solving. Ah. That's <laughs> quite, quite enough. <laughs> Some smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. Smooth jazz and the ice cream. <laughs> yes, that's number one priority. Bring a pint of ice cream and your favorite jazz music, and life will be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? Well, I think one more thing I have is uh, plastic bags because oh, yes. if you go to the uh, dining hall and you want a snack for later and you don't have snacks in you, you can just like. Put fruit or just make sure you get chocolate good at chips. Sneaking it out. <laughs> yes, yes. Because yes. a lot of times I they won't like let you do plastic that. Plastic bags are like low key. Yeah, or just put it in those, your bag. Like sterilite. I was gonna say if like you got. 
if you have like large thermoses um, or just like large uh, bottles that are not see through, you can uh, kind of put food in there. And <laughs> it looks like it's a drink. Coffee I'm just mug. saying that's what I did. I you put food in mug. my, uh, my yeah. mugs. That's um, right. And then I would walk it. <laughs> I would literally just wrap bagels up in like tissue paper and like put them in my backpack yes. on the side that they wouldn't see. It was like yeah. you know, like an outside clock and be like walk by like bye Millie, good to see you. You cut, you cut it up into sizable bits and you put it in the in the Tupperware in a mug. So now I see backpack. you with like ice a cream sundaes in a the thermos. Yes, ice cream sundaes in a thermos keeps it cold. Yes, yes. You oh my god, it's uh, dangerous. Habit. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, oh, it's also God. you pay for the food. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's all worth it. You pay it's a lot. Worth it. So you might as well I'm take like, advantage of it. 5,000. 100% validating this. Yeah. <laughs> take advantage of it. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the College Express Podcast. I hope you sat down, listened to all about your dorm life, and all about your residential hall and how you can get roommates for that. So if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button, click on that subscribe, click on the bell, make sure everything works. And just for testing, also, you'll get some good content out of it. And if you didn't know this already, you should know that we film this once a month at the very start of the month. You get the episode Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. One question gets answered. And then the entire thing gets released on Friday for your viewing pleasure. So a special thank you to Steph for joining us today. So thank you, Steph. And we hope to see you on a future podcast. And thank you to Kara and Mackenzie today. And we will catch you next time. Thank you.